In this video, we're going to talk about how to use an edge finder. What an edge finder is, is I put this in the spindle of my machine and then I feed it in until I start, um, until it starts to run true. And then it's going to pop off like this with a distinct wobble. Now what this does is it tells me that the edge of my edge finder is in contact with my workpiece. From there, I can compensate half the diameter of my um, end here, move that over, so then my machine spindle is perfectly aligned with my workpiece. So let's say I needed to move a uh, 100 thou from this edge if I had to drill and tap a hole. I could come in with an edge finder, have it touch, pop off, and then what I would do is I would move over, this diameter here is 200 thou, so I would move 100 thou, and now my spindle's aligned, and I can move now to the center of that whole location. I always use a collet. So a lot of people use a drill chuck when they're using this, and that's not ideal because my drill chuck is only holding it in three places, and what could happen is as I come over here, it could pop it off and cause it to throw it out. Also, it might not be running perfectly true, where the collet holds it all the way on my, um, on my diameter, and then it has a nice firm grip as I come in. Now, I want to make sure I am chucking onto the body, not onto this spring surface here. What this pointed edge is used for is if I had my workpiece and I needed to line my um, body to the hole, I could use that and have it bring it in till it runs true. So I could dial this, dial here. I could also use it to find, um, I could use it somewhat as a wiggler to help me locate an edge. So I'm gonna put this into my machine. And I always run my edge finders at 1000 RPM. Workpiece now close to my edge finder. And again, this is for my dice project. For this first one, I'm just gonna find the center of this block. I wanna make sure this edge is deburred because if there's a burr or a, a part sticking up there, it's gonna throw off my readings. So there's a few ways I can find center now. The first way is I can touch here, zero my DRO, touch here, and then come half the distance. If you don't have a DRO though, what you might wanna do is touch the edge here, measure this and then move half of the distance. If you do it the second way, you have to accommodate for the, the thickness of your edge finder. I'll show you how to do it both ways. So I have my RPM now set to a thousand RPM. That's what I wanna run my edge finders at. So I have it on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have it popped off, okay? And I'm gonna feed in until I have it start to run true. And once it pops off, you'll see it about now, okay? Once I have that pop off there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my zero here. I'm gonna give you another angle of that. So I have it popped off, okay? I'm feeding in and it's gonna pop off right about here, okay? So that's that pop off that you can see. So the first way is I'm just gonna hit my X, Y, zero on my DRO right here. So I have X and Y zeroed out. And then I can come and touch the other side. All right, so I'm here on the other side now. So I'm gonna raise this up. I can come in, I can touch this edge here. And again, that distinct pop off right there. Okay, I'm gonna shut this down. And if I look, my DRO is saying 1.640. So what I can do is I can divide that by two and then come to the center. 
So that would be 820. So if I came here, I could go my 820, I could zero it out. Then I would just need to do the same in this direction here. Okay, I'll show you the other way how to do that by touching off here. So again, I wanna have it wiggling off like that and I'm just gonna come feed in. I can see it touch and it's gonna pop off here. Okay, so if I didn't have a DRO, what I can do is I can zero this here, okay? So I have this zeroed and there's just a friction collar I can tighten here. So I have that zeroed out. And I have it tightened here. So now what I wanna do is I want to compensate. So I'm just gonna drop the table. I wanna compensate the half of the diameter or the radius. So that this is 200 thou, so I wanna move it 100 thou. So if I look here, I'm moving it 100 thou. So if I look from this side, if I look from this side, I can see that the center of my spindle is right on the edge here. Okay, so this is popped off, but if I have this coming straight here, I can see it's all, I can see it's all perfectly aligned right there. Okay, so the center of my spindle is right in edge, or right in line with the edge. So now I can move it over my distance to that first hole. So now I can come back over here. I'm gonna re-zero my handle and then move the distance. Now, if I move and if I change directions in my movement, I also need to be aware of my backlash, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, the, there's a video on lathes where I talk about backlash and that still applies here. So I'm gonna move now the distance that I have. So that's two, four, six, So now I have my spindle in the center of it this way, as well as this way. So now I can start to, that's the two ways I can use my edge finder. Thanks for watching.